All right, so today I want to introduce you to the Spark Ball Python, and the Spark is a pretty interesting morph. As a matter of fact, you've probably heard of the Puma Ball Python, that is actually a Spark with the yellow belly. And the interesting thing is, is a lot of these Spark combinations, it's either really an impressive combination when you mix it with certain things, or it's almost an invisible morph. It's a really subtle morph. As a matter of fact, if you took just a plain Spark and you laid it side by side with a normal, classic Ball Python, they almost look exactly the same. It's really hard to tell them apart. But you mix it with the right combinations, you can make some really impressive combos with the Spark. And in this video, I kind of want to show you some of the limitations and some of the awesome potential of the Spark. All right, so I'm gonna jump over here on morphmarket.com and the first snake that I wanna show you is this one. As a matter of fact, if someone handed me this snake, I would probably think this is just a straight, normal ball python with no other genes in the mix. And this is actually a spark or a yellow belly. So you know, in order to get this snake, what they actually did is they took a puma, which is an allelic combination of a spark and a yellow belly. They bred it to something else. This particular snake didn't get any other genes except, you know, it either got, there's a 50 50% chance that it's spark, 50% chance that it's yellow belly in allelic combinations. And the, the genes are so subtle and they're so close together that you really can't tell one from the other. It's kind of interesting. So what I actually wanted to do is I wanted to jump over here and show you some of the limitations of the spark. You know, it's a really subtle morph based on this. And what I want to do is I want to show you first a lesser and then I want to show you what happens when we add the spark on top of the lesser. So this is what a lesser ball python looks like. It's a really pretty amazing snake. As a matter of fact, I have two lessers in my collection. And if you breed two lessers together, you get 25% of the time you get an all white snake with bright blue eyes. Pretty awesome. Awesome. As a matter of fact, this year I actually produced a lesser scaleless head, trying to work it into the scaleless project. And I also have a lesser bamboo that's an allelic combo where it's an all white snake with blue eyes. Pretty awesome. So, this is what happens when you put spark on top of lesser. So, this snake right here, this is actually a spark lesser. And at first glance, you're probably thinking that just looks like a regular lesser to me. I can't even see the spark in there at all. It's pretty amazing. And here's another one. I just wanted to throw one more example of how subtle this is and how hard it's to, it is to tell if there's actually spark in there. This is a leopard ball python, and leopard is, I would consider it pretty much the king of combos. Works really well with almost every ball python gene. Really jumbles up the pattern, makes for some really interesting combos. This is what happens when you mix spark on top of leopard. You pretty much end up with a snake that looks like a leopard. You can't even tell the spark is in there. So I'd say when it comes to spark, I was actually looking through quite a few of these examples. I didn't really want to bore you with a whole bunch of stuff where it doesn't really work very well but one snake you're probably familiar with is the puma I actually pulled up quite a few pictures of the puma this is what one of them looks like and it's kind of interesting I, I found in a lot of these allelic combinations especially in this whole complex with the gravel yellow belly asphalt spark and specter and all these it seems like almost there's different lines of each gene and when you mix them together you get different visually different results for the same genetic makeup it's kind of interesting so for example if you take a closer look at this puma it has this really bright yellow line right down the top of the back outlined in a, a pretty dark black and then on the sides is really bright kind of an orangish yellow with this crazy head stamp and here is another example of a puma you can see this one's not quite as impressive as the last one you can see that the yellows kind of turned to orange here and if you just keep taking a look at some of these pumas take a look at this one this one you wouldn't even think it's genetically identical to those first two snakes doesn't really have much yellow in it at all looks like a completely different snake although this is just a spark and a yellow belly so here's another one this is kind of surprising too this is another puma no other genes in the mix uh, it makes for a white snake with kind of this dirty black line right down the back completely different and I just pulled up a couple more examples here's another puma a plus 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 because the, you know what they're saying is this is probably the best puma that I've ever seen as a matter of fact I think that first puma maybe outdid this one a little bit the, I really like the really bright yellow and the lines 
I have one more picture of a puma here, and this one is orange. It's a little bit more orange than yellow, and the line down the back is a little bit broken up. It's kind of interesting. So I just found it really curious that, you know, you can have different versions of puma. It's like your puma is not the same as my puma, although I'm not into this project. But it's kind of interesting, especially in the yellow belly complex with all these allelic combos, the asphalts and the highways, that you can get really different dramatic results. As a matter of fact, I've seen a lot of people where they'll actually take like one complex like like a puma and then they'll reproduce it in, in the like, kind of like line breeding and all the offspring will look similar to the parents making me think that there's different versions of maybe yellow belly and spark and all these different genes that actually when they come together you can see them it's pretty obvious the differences between the visual appearance so here's another one. This is actually the leopard puma. So <laughs> you know where I'm going with this, you know, to make some really amazing s spark combinations. What you really need to do is you need to add other genes on top of like a like a, a lelic complex like the puma, which is the spark yellow belly, and then you start adding stuff on top of it. This is actually the leopard on top of the spark and the yellow belly. It makes for a really awesome snake. It's a little bit underexposed. I wish it was a little bit brighter, but you can definitely see this almost looks kind of like a blood python it's pretty amazing the colors on the snake it's probably one of the most amazing morphs that I've ever seen and sometimes it's you know just layering on the right genes on the snake that really make it really pop it's pretty amazing to, to try to figure out where you can take these genes and where it works really well and kind of focus on building and improving that kind of a combination maybe add some stuff on top of this and you know looking at this I would think you know if you added pass down or orange dream or something like that on top of it you could really probably brighten and enhance this and maybe even make it more contrasty it's, it's a pretty amazing snake so here's another one. This is this kind of surprised me actually. The Enchi Puma. So Enchi usually what it does is it reduces the pattern, maybe it brings out a little bit more yellow, and it kind of surprised me that it kind of made this uh, kind of you know it took the black lines and faded them out a little bit more, gave you this really amazing looking snake by just adding Enchi into the Puma. That's a really awesome combo. So here's another one. This is actually not a puma. This is, you know, we're taking out the yellow belly and we're adding in Spectre, which is kind of another gene that's in the same allelic complex. And you can see it almost looks the same, but you almost get this crazy patterning on the side. Looks really awesome. The Spectre Spark. And I would say this is probably one of the, one of the things, I was actually kind of looking at some of these prices. This one actually sold for $400 in 2018. I'd say there's probably not a lot of Spectre Sparks out there. Kind of both of them are kind of unique genes that you know I'm not really used to looking at or working with. Here's another one. So speak about the you know talk about the difference between the you know the same genetic snake, uh, the same genetic makeup, and two different visual appearances. So these are both Spectre Sparks. This one and the the other one. So you take a look at this one. It has a lot of pattern on the side, and then this one, all the pattern is kind of wiped out. So you're wondering, is it the you know the the differences between the lines of Spark or the differences between the lines of Spectre, or is there something else in there? that's affecting it but it's pretty amazing the the same genetic makeup is completely different even with the specter spark so here's another one they're calling this the spark freeway although it's not really the spark freeway because the freeway if you take a look at this the freeway is actually an asphalt yellow belly and there's actually no way that you can have a true spark freeway because it would be a spark asphalt yellow belly you can't have three genes in the same location as far as putting them all in. it's, it's it it'd almost be like making you know uh, a super pastel pastel you really couldn't put three pastels in one snake the most genes you can have is two for a super so spark freeway this is actually you know kind of uh, it's, it actually should be called a uh, spark asphalt. Pretty amazing snake. So you can definitely see it works with the asphalt. 
And the asphalt is really similar to gravel. Here is the gravel spark. And it's kind of interesting looking at the differences between the asphalt and the gravel. I kind of like the, the asphalt a little bit more. It's a little bit more contrasty as far as making some impressive combos. If, if I had a choice between asphalt and gravel, although I have seen you know good examples and bad examples of each gene. So here's another one. This is this this kind of surprised me. This is actually the pastel gravel spark. And you know what this looks like to me? This looks like the asphalt yellow belly with the pastel on it, which is really interesting. And this is, you know, you add pastel to the highway or pastel to the freeway. And the and the, the freeways kind of shine a little bit more when you put pastel in. It almost gives us an electric and kind of an appearance to the snake when you have the asphalt instead of the gravel. I think it's a little bit better of a combination but it's really interesting that this doesn't even have yellow belly in it it's just a pastel gravel spark which is a really interesting combo I've never seen anything quite like it so here is another this is, this is another example of the differences between the same genetic makeup and two different visual appearances so this is also a pastel gravel spark looks completely different than this snake it's night and day between the two and it makes me wonder did they really identify these snakes properly or is this you know just different lines of the same genes and that's one of the tricky things because you start breeding them into other projects and you're not really sure is this yellow belly or is this gravel until you breed them out again and you start proving them out so sometimes it can be a little bit tricky getting some of these subtle genes together and getting the IDs properly but I'm thinking it's just different lines of the same genes Here's another one that I thought was pretty impressive. This is the Super Pastel Gravel Spark. <laughs> it's, it's one of the genes, it's, it's kind of interesting because you walk up to some of these and if you're not used to gravel, you're not used to spark, you know, most people are used to pastels or super pastels and then you throw it into something like this and you're scratching your head, can I really reproduce this? What can I do with this? What is the potential of breeding this into other combos? So for example, if you actually took the Super Pastel Gravel Spark and you bred it to a normal ball python what you would actually get is you get a whole clutch of pastels and they would all look like pastels because some of them would be pastel sparks and some would be pastel gravels you probably couldn't see the spark or the gravel or even differentiate between the two and all of them would look like uh, pastels, basically just pastels without the spark of the gravel. And then you'd have to sell them as either gravel or spark. It gets a little bit confusing working on some of these allelic pro uh, projects with really subtle morphs. And it's really difficult to tell one from the other. Here's another one. This is the Super Spark Ball Python. So you, what you can actually do is you take a spark and you breed it to a spark, you get a Super Spark. And then if you actually took this, you bred it to something else, everything, all the offspring would be sparks, which would be really powerful because then you'd know 100% for sure the ID of all of the offspring. And it's kind of interesting. This almost looks like some of the allelic complexes with the spark and the gravel and the yellow belly, the freeways and the high highways and all that it's, it's kind of interesting you can definitely tell a lot of these it seems like there's a, a kind of a almost like the shield head stamp on a lot of the sparks that I've seen on a lot of these complexes I'm just kind of curious how much this one sold for this is this actually sold for $900 quite a high price you know some of these if, if you really get your ID right and you produce some of these like a super asphalt I've seen them sell for like thousands of dollars for some of these supers it's pretty amazing so here's another one. This is kind of interesting. You can actually take the Super Spark and you can layer on Leopard. So essentially what you're doing is you're starting with the Leela combos or the Supers and then you're adding on stuff on top of that. This is a really awesome snake. I'd say this is, you know, it's a little bit underexposed. It could be a little bit brighter in this picture, but you can definitely tell it's super contrasty and really just a crazy pattern on this snake. It's pretty awesome. This one's actually sold for <laughs> almost a thousand. $900 plus 45 shipping. Pretty awesome snake. 
And here's another one. This is the Pastavi Super Spark. So this is the Pastel Mojave uh, and the Super Spark. So you can see you can start adding different jeans on top of it. And that's, that's probably where I'd start. Is if I was actually thinking about getting into some of these complexes, I would really focus mainly on making some of the allelic combos or the supers and adding other jeans on top. All right, so it is time for the question of the day. And Eric King asks, do you know of any snakes that don't get so big and stay a little bit smaller? And that is a very good question. As a matter of fact, I think that's why ball pythons are so popular is because this is pretty much as big as they get. This is Bobby, my bamboo ball python. And ball pythons never get too big for one person to handle. That's probably the advantage. But if you're looking at this snake saying, hey, that's just too much snake for me, there are other options. You can actually get some smaller snakes. As a matter of fact, I've heard quite a few people at the reptile shows asking me for Kenyan sand boas. That's a good alternative. They stay pretty small. Another one is king snakes. There's quite a few king snakes with really bright colors. The thing you have to really watch with king snakes is you really want to do your homework because there's a lot of different subspecies. Some can get pretty big. There's king snakes and milk snakes pretty much in the same group. They look almost, <laughs> almost the same in some cases, but there are some differences but you really have to know which kind of king snake or milk snake you're getting. Some of them stay pretty small. I actually had a pair of Arizona mountain king snakes. I would say they didn't get as long as Bobby here, but they stayed really thin, almost a little bit thicker than a pencil. Really small, skinny snake. Really awesome. Really brightly colored snake. It was a black and white snake. Really awesome. You know, there's, there's other things you can get into. I would say garter snakes are a really good alternative as well. The the cool thing about garter snakes is not only will they eat rodents, they'll eat other things like fish, which is pretty neat. I've actually seen people put little bowls of minnows in their enclosures, live minnows with garter snakes, and they'll actually eat them right out of the bowl. It's pretty awesome. So that is pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.